All right, so here's our final set of notes that should be uploaded tonight on bioaccumulation and biomagnification. So first, let's talk about what these are. Bioaccumulation is what happens when uh, the amount of some sort of gluten or toxin gets uh, becomes higher in organisms than it is in the surrounding environment. Um, this is going to be very common with things that are persistent, so persistent organic uh, pollutants, as well as things that are fat soluble. So what ends up happening is the organism absorbs this stuff faster than they can eliminate it, either by breaking it down with the you know enzymes in your metabolism, or by excreting it, basically pooing it or peeing it out. So you have an organism, it's sitting there in an environment, and let's say the blue line filling this up represents the amount of whatever pollutant or chemical we're looking at. And over the course of this organism's lifetime, it absorbs more and more from the environment so that the amount that it has in its body is at a higher concentration than what's in the environment. And the longer the half-life of uh, whatever substance you're looking at, the greater the risk you have of poisoning because this stuff is going to linger longer, not only in the the environment, but in the organism as well. Biomagnification happens when you move up the food chain. So let's say we have these producers here and notice their concentration of this uh, toxic chemical or pollutant, which is represented by the red star, is like one per plant. But notice what happens when you have um, something in the food chain start eating that producer. Well, you know, these little fish, they exist by eating more than one producer per day. So they're going to start building up higher levels of this toxic compound. And then as you move up the food chain, the larger consumer is going to build up even more of this. So this is a very big problem for the top predators in an ecosystem, because not only do they have higher amounts of these chemicals in their bodies than in the environment, the amount that they build up in their body gets higher and higher as you go up a food chain or up a food web. So what are some of the substances that will bioaccumulate? Um, not only some of these uh, persistent organic pollutants like DDT or various pesticides, you have other compounds like PCBs, which are um, synthetic chemicals, and then you have some heavy metals like mercury that can bioaccumulate as well as biomagnify, so they can do both of these. And since they accumulate uh, inside an organism and they build up in organisms at higher uh, trophic levels, they can start to have really big environmental impacts because they're basically building up in organisms until they get to a level where they're toxic. Um, and these are taken in through an organism either by ingestion, so what you eat, or if you're an aquatic ecosystem through contact, because you're completely surrounded by water that could contain this. And some aquatic organisms have permeable skin and or even like um, a lot of amphibians also have permeable skin, which means it lets stuff enter very easily. That's what makes, for example, amphibians very, very vulnerable to pollutants in the environment. So let's look at some of the effects of these. Um, well, some of the effects that you can see in ecosystems, um, and one of the big things that Rachel Carson, the author of Silent Spring, really brought attention to was the fact that with this increased exposure to various uh, persistent organic pollutants like DDT, what you saw is uh, shells of the, uh, the various birds, especially top predators like eagles or uh, condors or hawks, their eggshells were thin. And you know birds sit on the eggs in their nest to help incubate them. Well, if you're sitting on a shell that's very thin, there's a higher likelihood that the shell is going to break and that baby egg is not going to survive to term. So here we have a graph showing the eggshell thickness. Um, it's an eggshell thickness index. I'm not sure which, um, oh, it's with British sparrowhawks. I'm not 100% sure how they determine that number, but you'll notice that once DDT came into use after the mid 1940s, the thickness of eggshells decreased. And I bet if you put some error bars on this thing, it would be a significant decrease for any of you who've had AP Bio. Or statistics. Um, notice that you can actually see a difference in here peregrine falcon eggs um, with those that are normal and those uh, from birds that have been exposed to DDT. So what this ended up doing is it causing a dramatic reduction in the populations of some of these 
top predator birds because their their death rate was increasing. Um, there are also impacts on humans because remember, a lot of times we tend to eat higher on the food chain. So biomagnification is a, a really big issue for us. So this, for example, graph is a set of uh, graphs showing the various effects from mercury exposure. Mercury, when it gets into aquatic ecosystems, gets very easily converted into something called methylmercury, which is a very easily absorbed, highly toxic form. And what you can see here is that, for example, in part A, um, ingestion of mercury actually decreases the IQ of fetuses in pregnant women. So if a pregnant woman ingests a lot of mercury, this methylmercury, then the um, IQ of their baby on average is going to decrease. Notice you see this decrease through a lot of countries in the world. Some of the places where you particularly see it, Greenland and Iceland, like Norway, Finland, Japan. Uh, I feel like that's Thailand, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, these are places that have a lot of fish in their diet because they are eating fish that are coming from polluted waters that are building up lots of methylmercury. This is also why pregnant women are advised to limit their fish intake so that way they don't see this effect. Um, then you have, for example, fatal heart attack deaths um, that are linked to an increase in methylmercury exposure. Um, you see economic loss from decreased IQs, um, loss from heart attack deaths, and just kind of total loss in U.S. dollars. Um, so total economic effects of this um, uh, exposure to methylmercury. So these kinds of chemicals that magnify in the food chain and accumulate in organisms have a really big impact on human health um, and a, an impact that you may not necessarily um, associate with that pollutant. For example, you may not think, oh, okay, well, if IQs are reducing in this country, oh, maybe due to methylmercury exposure, you may just think, oh, I misremembered how smart people were when I was younger versus now. If you use IQ as a measure of smartness. Um, so then keep in mind that this can also impact not only reproductive health, but your nervous and your circulatory systems. Uh, so that depressing thought I will leave you with, and we'll get some more lessons in a couple of days.